Welcome back everybody to PyBatch YouTube. And today I want to talk about unit testing and functional testing. What's the difference and how would you distinguish them? And I will show a practical example how I did that for one of our projects. And if you ask a chat GPT, you get actually a pretty good answer. Unit testing involves in testing individual units or components. A unit can refer to a function, a class, module, small bits, right? It's good for isolation, granularity, speed, and TDD. Functional testing on the other hand is um, you test the functionality of the system. So how different components uh, function together, right? So when would you use one or the other? So again, unit testing or testing individual components, functional testing to testing the system behavior, right? So how the pieces fit together. That's all nice and abstract, but let's look at a practical example. So here I'm in the Git stats uh, project on the PyBets open source org. And uh, it's a fun little project I built a while ago to get stats from a GitHub repo. To see that in action, I can run this, for example. On the PyBytes books repo. I think it just downloads a copy. I've not used this in a while. <laughs> But uh, it downloads a copy to work on, and then it will use a couple of Git commands to get some stats. And a quick shout out to Clayton, uh, who um, worked on this issue where we added terminal plotting. So instead of just some numbers, we actually get bars now. Um, and as you can see here, that's way nicer. So it's a good example as well. We have projects on the PyBets open source, and there are issues and that are labeled help wanted or even bugs and stuff. Um, you can jump in and uh, write code, uh, just a reminder. So I will put the link uh, below. Um, so this is really cool. Um, and there's number of commits per week, a uh, few more things. I mean, this can be nicer, there can be more plotting, but it's good for a start. Uh, files that are most often found in commits could be useful. But the point of this video is to look at the testing. Um, so if you run the high tests here, uh, you will notice that if you run them all, it's quite slow. So I can use the duration flag if you go to the documentation. The limit is less than 0 0.005 seconds. Unless you use for both, then uh, you can see the timings on, on all of them. So let's uh, do that. And now we get timing for all the tests. And you can already see that the functional test here is much slower, right? So you have, I have one functional test, test report, and it takes seven seconds. And I will explain in a bit why that is. But then the unit tests are like super fast. So one strategy I've used is to put the test in different packages, so, or folders. So we have a functional folder and a unit folder. So now with PyTest, if I just want to run the unit test, I can do minus K unit, and it's like super fast. If I want to run the functionals test, then that will run the slower test, right? So it's a that gives you kind of a, a nice way to isolate those tests if you want. And now we'll also show what's the difference. So for unit tests, again, these tests uh, typically test one component. And you often will have to mock out certain things. So here, for example, I mock out the subprocess check output because that's doing like real IO uh, to the library or to the repo. And that's where some slowness happens, right? So I actually give that a hard-coded git, git config output which is in the test fixtures. Um, so yeah, this, this mocks that out. Um, and I'm just using a static output, which is way faster. So in a unit test here, I'm just testing one thing at a time and I'm using mocking to not do real IO. Mocking you also often see in the context of calling APIs. So you don't want to make that call over the network and you give it some static output. So it will be super fast. On the other hand, if I go to the functional test, here I have a test report and the reporting um, option kind of tests this application end to end. Because if you generate the report, you're going to do all the underlying things of downloading the repo, running the get commands on it, parsing the outputs and making the report. But that's also 
what makes it slow. Hence, I've put that in an isolated test in the functional folder. And um, so this is actually, uh, I got some setup code here in a fixture called karma.dir. So if we go to test, functional conf test, where I put all my fixtures. Here you can see why it's slow because I'm actually Git cloning a repo, a fork. Uh, I made a fork so I can, um, so it's guaranteed not to change. And this is actually a step that uh, that takes longer, right? Uh, this setup code. So yeah, uh, I think the takeaway here is that I have that now isolated to a functional test. So if you look at the test folder, uh, right off the bat, you see like, oh, these are the unit tests, these are the functional tests. So it's very clear to the developer um, what these tests uh, ought to do. And it's also a way how you can run those tests in isolation because again, the unit tests are way faster. So I've not really gone into the details of these tests. I'm happy to do so. I definitely want to do a video on mocking, but this video is really just about explaining the difference between unit and functional tests how I used it in a practical project and um, yeah, how that folder structure and the way I organize those tests can help you, both from the communication to other developers, but also to make it easier to run certain sets of tests in isolation. Hope this is helpful. Comment below if you wanna see follow-up videos on this topic. There's a lot more I can teach about this and uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.